Hey everyone, welcome back to the Clueless Dad. Today we've got another fun furniture assembly video. We're going to be putting together four Hindo cases from Ikea. They look like this. And actually, as you can see, there's shelves and there's actually also a cabinet piece. I got one cabinet piece and three shelf pieces and I'm going to put them over here. This is actually my home office. If you've been watching my channel, you've seen actually a couple rooms in my house already. Uh, this is basically the third bedroom, which I use as a home office. Got my editing station here. So in Hong Kong, space is a real premium. This room is actually only something like two meters by two meters. And there's actually a, sh a ledge here by the window. So uh, you can't even use all the floor space. And as you notice, no built-in closets. So rather than waste space on a closet, they keep everything flexible and just have bare walls. And everything has to be a wardrobe, a cabinet, a set of drawers, nothing built in at all. So uh, in this case, I've got a file cabinet, I've got a couple tables, uh, and I've got suitcases piled up all over the place, and I really need it to be more organized. Um, especially now with the baby, I've had to move stuff around, and uh, I've got way too much junk everywhere, so I thought I should go out and invest in some new shelves. So enough talking, let's get these guys together. So first I'm going to take this table apart and clear out some of this junk, then I'm going to start putting together my Hindos, and let's do this all in time lapse starting now. Okay, so let's clear up the suitcases, move everything out in the hall, and then start assembling my Hindos. Okay, back to time-lapse, go. Okay, so now we have it all cleared up and let's get started on the Hindo. Uh, so we're going to do one part of the shelves first and then we'll do the cabinet second. So shelves here, cabinet here, shelves, shelves. How's that sound? Let's take a quick second and talk about the Hindo system uh, and the reason why I got these. Uh, you can't tell from the picture, but as you see once I put them together, they're actually made out of metal. Uh, and they're not that expensive. Uh, each one of these units costs about, uh, I think it's 350 Hong Kong, which is like $40, $45. Uh, and then the one with the cabinet, which I'll put together next, is only something like $60. So, uh, you know, it's not the cheapest one, but it's actually the widest one, modular, sturdy, and uh, not too crazy expensive. Um, and then obviously compared to some of those crappy particle board shelves they have, this one will definitely hold up. You can move it, you can take it apart, put it back together again, and it'll definitely hold up much better than uh, your normal Billy bookcases, that's for sure. So anyway, here's what it looks like. Uh, let's get it from that into this form now, and let's get started. Okay, so here we go. Here we got the first one done. It's not that hard, just a little bit annoying. Lots and lots of screws to tighten. In the case of metal shelves like this, you often have the problem of uh, so many screws and you can't tighten them all up because the parts won't necessarily align. So you have to put them all in loosely, uh, but not too loose that things uh, fall apart. But uh, put it all together, half tighten, then put the rest of it together. And then at the, some point at the end, go back through and screw everything in tight so that it hopefully fits pretty well. In this case, the middle shelf, because it's adjustable, um, doesn't quite fit perfectly. And uh, by the time you get the hole lined up and tighten it, you can actually see it's sort of bending to fit. But for this kind of price, you can't get precision machine parts, right? 
So um, anyway, uh, I adjusted it to the highest point um, just so that you can see. So you have a pretty decent, this is, I don't know, maybe 14 inches, 15 inches of space. You also have the option of leaving this whole thing off if you wanted, which I may do because I have some big Samla uh, plastic bins that I might want to put under here if I can't fit them on top. So let's try the one with the metal cabinet and we'll put it right here. Okay, so this one has a lot more pieces, so it's a lot heavier. Uh, let's give it a try though and see if we can put it together really quickly and stick it over here. And here's what it looks like. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, so here we are. We've got the two pieces of the Hindo. Uh, we've got the bottom one with the cabinet, and we've got the top shelf now stacked. Uh, and you can see this is basically where they meet. Uh, and here's the cabinet in action. So uh, not too fancy. There's kind of a latch here, if I can get it. Yeah, so you can see there's a latch here. And uh, basically, it's the same exact pieces. Uh, the shelves and stuff are all the same. The poles are the same. The only major difference is uh, there's uh, basically these extra hinged doors and these side pieces and a back piece. Uh, but the secret is, this is kind of a scam. So the scam part is you think this is pretty secure. It's got a lockable uh, enclosure, etc., etc. Um, but in fact, it's not secure. Like this one is secure, it has a lock. Um, you know, once this thing is locked, you pretty much can't get it open without really prying this, uh, the metal apart. This one, it's actually not even that hard. Um, if you have put this together, you know that basically you can just take the side right off. Um, and that's totally a mage over oversight. You know, maybe you could put some, uh, security screws through these holes, but otherwise, basically, you can get to anything inside here if you just know how it goes together. Um, and that's actually pretty lame. But luckily, in my case, I wasn't really worried about security, more just looking for uh, a way to keep this thing tidy. Actually, after I bought it, I was thinking, you know, is this thing really worth another 25 bucks more than just the shelves? I probably would have been happy with just the shelves and an extra 20 bucks in my pocket. So now I've got one here. I've got a second one I have to put together. I'm gonna to try to fit it in here. If it doesn't fit sideways, I'll put it this way. Um, but basically, uh, I should greatly increase my storage. And of course, we have a lot of space up here on top as well. So that's it for now. Uh, let's do a little bit more time lapse when I put the second two together and then talk afterwards. Okay, here we are. Uh, finally got them all put together. So now we have a double Hindo here, and then we have the Hindo shelf along with the Hindo cabinet uh, here on the right. And so all together, this was about 220 US, so not too bad. So one of the things about living here in Hong Kong is we have extremely damp, humid summers. And so, especially with wood furniture, uh, maybe behind your wardrobe cabinet, uh, you can get mildew on there and it's a it's actually pretty easy to wipe off but it can actually damage and stain things so that's actually one of the positives about having 
uh, metal bookshelves is that that's not a problem, you can just wipe it off and it won't do any permanent damage. So that wasn't uh, an overriding factor, but it's a nice plus for these guys. Um, overall, as you can see, the assembly wasn't too hard. By the time I did my fourth one, I was pretty good at it. So as you probably noticed, I didn't actually do the, the official instructions the second, third, and fourth times. Um, you know, I think it's actually easier, and given the lack of space I have here, I just started screwing things together um, as fast as I could uh, in not necessarily the same order but that's just because I'm such a rebel. So if you've seen a lot of my unboxing videos uh, and assembly for furniture videos, uh, I don't just put it together according to instructions. Uh, I also go through the design a little bit afterwards to show what's good or bad. Um, and specifically in this case, I'll talk about the bad. When it comes to these uh, mass produced furniture things, so the main guiding principle on the design of all these things is more than looks, more than functionality, is just uh, cost to manufacture. So they inevitably will use uh, the cheapest method that works and gives the decent look that they're aiming for. There's just a lot of cheap screws screwing into cheap metal. So as you can see, some of these uh, pieces don't actually line up that well. Um, and you kind of, you know, depending on how tight you make this, it fits a little bit better. Um, this is really because there's basically four screws in here. And depending on the order in which you tighten them, um, it'll fit it doesn't fit quite perfectly so you end up getting things like this especially with this middle shelf it seems like all four of these had the same problem not the end of the world but uh, you know definitely not attractive so in the case of this one uh, the place that they really seem to cut the corners most is on the screws um, there's basically just some machine screws going straight into these metal poles here you can see what the uh, threads actually look like this is pretty cheap basically they just drill a hole in here uh, tap it and then your machine screw is supposed to go in there this violates one of the cardinal rules of machine design, which is never to load uh, a threaded rod or bolt in shear. Uh, because, because of the threads, this will cause a stress concentration. In this case, all these bolts here are all loaded in shear. If you put something on this shelf, it's going to load all four of the bolts on the corners in shear. And that's just a real big no-no. Because basically a threaded rod is just a bunch of grooves, you have a very sharp point everywhere at the bottom of the thread and it's really easy to have it fail along that crack. So, uh, you know, for a bookshelf with four screws that you're not really loading and unloading, not the end of the world, but, you know, that's basically going to be one of the ways it fails. So that kind of assembly would be totally unacceptable in any kind of machine, in a car, etc. Um, but since these are bookshelves and uh, you're not, you know, jumping up and down on it, um, they kind of can get away with it. But I've also seen it in ours stoke a sleepy crib which is actually something that you know you actually put your kid in and for that that's pretty unacceptable um, even if they're bigger bolts and even if there's multiple ones kind of a bad design especially in that case where uh, the bed was so expensive these are kind of cheap you can't expect too much out of them one other thing is because this is pretty thin metal um, i found that if you keep tightening these uh, you'll end up just sort of warping this and and uh, squeezing it so you have to actually be careful not to over tighten it but overall, um, you know, for what you're paying for it, you can't expect too much. Um, so anyway, uh, that's my take on them. I'm going to load these guys up. Can't wait to put away all my stuff. I've got it lined up in the living room, making a huge mess. And my wife wants to kill me. So um, hope you guys enjoyed this and hope to see you next time. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. If you have any feedback on the IKEA Hindo, uh, let me know in the comments. And please check out our other videos. We've got the Sunvig crib, we've got all the uh, Stoke products, tons of them, and I'll probably be doing more IKEA stuff because I've got to replace my bookshelves in the living room pretty soon too. So again, sorry for the mess, and see you guys next time. Okay, so that's the uh, Takara Tomi one-way baby monitor with night lamp and with this cool visual uh, uh, volume setup.